Well, many of you sent in email questions, and we want to take a few minutes to answer some of those for you. This first one comes, Pat, from Marie, who says, How do I begin to witness to my brother who doesn't believe in God, the Bible, or Jesus at all? Where do I start? Uh, Marie, you start with your life. Your life is the testimony. You have something better, and it may take a tragedy in your brother before he begins to understand there's something more. But in the meantime, you pray for him. You ask for an opening. But don't be trying to push religion and push mm -hmm. Jesus and push the Bible all the time. Just praise the Lord. Live. When hard times come to you, you have an overcoming spirit, and he'll say, there's something you've got I want. But it's your life that will be the witness, not what you say. Mm -hmm. This is Susan who says, I have a question about the second coming. If Jesus returns to earth after I've already died and gone to heaven, will I be in heaven without him? I was so excited that one day I'll be with the Lord in heaven only to find out that he's coming back to earth. Will I have to go back to earth then too, or do we remain in a spiritual form after we die? This is confusing. Well, your, your question is confusing to say the least. <laughs> All right, here's, here's what we understand. Uh, the bodies we have, in a sense, sleep in the ground until the Lord's return. He said to the thief on the cross, this day you'll be with me in paradise. So the spirit would be with the Lord in paradise, as I understand it. But there is a time that's called the resurrection of the dead. And those who sleep, uh, uh, those of us who are alive will not... Uh, go behind those who sleep, and we, they'll all be resurrected together. Mm -hmm. And we will meet the Lord in the air. He'll be coming back, and the resurrection will be there to meet Him, and we'll forever be with the Lord. So don't worry. Wherever He is, that's where you're going to be. <laughs> all right. Yes. Hey, this is Diego Pat, who says, Recently, I was teamed with a new hire at work who's not a Christian. For a while, I tried to ignore his snickers when I spoke of Christ's message, but it really has become unbearable for me. I spoke with my manager about it to see if I could be moved to another group and was told that the company would make no personnel changes based on religious differences. Every time I offer my advice and try to help this man see the light, I am subject to ridicule. What should I do? Diego, what you should do is take the word of the Lord. He said, don't cast your pearls before swine. And uh, you remember what happens if you've got a bunch of pigs and you've got priceless pearls and you throw the, pig, the, the pearls out to the pigs, they're looking for uh, chestnuts or some other kind of nut, and they get a pearl and they chew on it and it doesn't taste good and they get mad and they turn around and want to stick you with their tusks. Um, you don't take precious things and just pass them out to somebody who's a scoffer. Live your life. Live your life before him. Pray for him. Look for an opportunity, but don't try to force it. Be natural. But every, you're trying to say, well, let me tell you about Jesus, and he laughs at you. Well, let me tell you about what God did, and he laughs at you. Let me tell you what I had in church, and he laughs at you. Forget it. Don't Try to cast your pearls before swine. Of course, he'll turn and rend you, and that's what's happening. So listen to the Lord. And it's kind of like what you said to the girl who wanted to know about the brother who didn't know God. It's your life. Live it out. You live your live life before him and love him and, and let it go. All right. This is a viewer who says, I was talking to a friend about tithes, and she asked me, where in the Bible does it say we have to give 10%? I've always just heard this is what we should give when tithing, but I can't find it in the Bible to show her. Please help. Um, we get questions about where is where, where in the Bible. But let me recommend that you get what's called a concordance that has all these various orders, then you can look them up yourself. But the system of tithing, to give a tenth, and there were several tithes, you find it in Genesis, you find it in uh, Leviticus, you find it in Numbers, you find it in Deuteronomy. And you find it in other parts of the Old Testament. There was a system that was in, uh, involved in, in caring for the religious establishment in Israel that involved giving 10% and then ties over and above that. Now, if you want to look at something, look at Malachi, 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 the third chapter, and you'll see 
God says, You have robbed me with tithes and offerings. Bring your tithes into the storehouse and, and prove me if I won't pour you such a blessing you can't contain it. Now, that's where you'll find it. Now, as Christians, are we obligated to tithe? No, because we belong to Jesus. And that means everything we have is His. I mean, He may want 90% and you keep 10. I mean, it depends on what the Lord tells you to do, he, you know. But you are His and your property is His, and that's the concept. But if you want to find out the system of tithing, go carefully into the Old Testament and read those various books I told you about. Yeah. Well, apparently that's the time. We've uh, that's got. all the time we've got. All right, thanks for those questions.